Hey there, this is uh, Mazzy here, and I'm gonna do a little overview of my collection from Verve Records. And I'm recording this on August 6th, and the reason I'm mentioning the date is because today is the birthday of Norman Grants. Norman Grant started Verve Records in 1957, and he had a label uh, prior to that, Clef Records, so he absorbed that, and he started Verve because of one artist, uh, initially. Artist he managed by the name of Ella Fitzgerald. Now, uh, I'll just get a little overview right here. Verve Records, this is an amazing book. Um, of the overview of Verve Records, sort of the sound of America, the story of Verve, one of the most successful jazz labels of all time. And I know all around here you see plenty of videos on Blue Note Records and Impulse Records, but uh, Verve, I think, is one of the most important uh, jazz labels around. And then it, uh, it merged and it expanded and there were offshoots into folk and uh, rock and roll, which I'm gonna go into, into a little bit of that from my collection to the 60s. Uh, and 70s, but not much beyond that. Eventually it was sold to uh, Universal Music. Um, but a little bit of history. Again, this book is amazing, not only for the history of Verve Records uh, that he started in 1957, but the amazing cover art. Uh, different decades and different artists they've used over the years, and not unlike Blue Note, but a whole different illustrative style. And these, um, these, covers to me are amongst the most uh, stunning album art ever made. And the roster of artists they've had, um, and I'll just cover on it, no way I'm going to be able to go on everything, but um, just to give you an idea, Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald, Charlie Parker, Jimmy Smith, Oscar Peterson, Wes Montgomery, Billy Holiday, Ben Webster, Colin Hopkins, Nina Simone, uh, later Dinah Krall, Stan Getz, Duke Ellington, on and on and on. And Charlie Bird, George Benson, Herbie Hancock, Art Tatum, Sonny Stitt, Herb Ellis, Anita O'Day, Herbie Mann, when he used to wear shirts. Um, but amazing book, and I highly recommend this book because it also gets into um, you know all the uh, artists that recorded on Verve during their pretty much their jazz heyday for the most part. I mean, I'd say Duke Ellington, Charlie Parker, Louis Armstrong uh, are amongst uh, the most important artists in jazz history ever. I should be wearing a. Uh, <laughs> A Verve t-shirt today, but I don't have one. So uh, I think that needs to be next on my list. But anyway, highly recommended. So Norman Grant's just a little overview. He started Verve. He had it until um, about 1961, 62. And then Sinatra, Frank Sinatra wanted to uh, start his own label and kind of buy a label. And so he was negotiating with Norman Grant's to take over Verve and have it his label. And apparently um, they were about to sign the deal, but um, Norman Grants wanted to stay on as the head producer there, and Sinatra didn't want that. So the deal was nixed, and um, Sinatra ended up starting Reprise, Reprise Records, and he got Mo Austin uh, to run that label, who would later be the chairman of uh, Warner Brothers, and then WIA, Warner Electric Atlantic. Um, an amazing uh, record man, Mo Austin, but that's another tale for another day. Um, so, and I think in 61, 62, Norman Grant sold Verve to MGM Records, and then uh, it was taken over. The main producer was Creed Taylor. You might know the name Creed Taylor. Have you heard of CTI Records? Well, he ran Verve through 1967, and Creed Taylor became, made it a little more commercial label, um, and I'll show you some of those records as well here. He left in uh, 1967 and started CTI Records, and that's a whole other... Uh, uh, musical uh, record history. But anyway, i uh, show part of my collection, uh, Ella in Hollywood. Now, I didn't pull out every record I have on Verve. Just want to give you an overview because it would it goes on t way too long. Um, this one is a gorgeous record. This is um, like somebody in love, Verve Records. A wonderful, amazing cover photograph here. Um, I love this record. Beautiful, gorgeous. Now, probably one of the 
best of the studio records from uh, Verb, in my opinion, is Clap Hands, Here Comes Charlie. This amazing uh, record by Ella Fitzgerald. Ella Fitzgerald is probably my uh, favorite jazz singer of all time. Uh, we can get into a little bit of Billie Holiday, which is more of a bluesy singer with jazz overtones, and she uh, was on Verve as well uh, for a time, but uh, this is a highly recommended album. And this, I bet, this is a mono version I have, so here we go. Verve into the 70s did a whole different thing. Obviously, it was owned by different uh, parent companies, and they did a series of these black and white covers. Later years of these artists, but still amazing records. This is Ella and Duke at the Cote d'Azur. There's a great, uh, complete CD box set that I have that I'm not showing today. But um, this is a wonderful record on Verve. Again, this is, was issued in the 70s, and this is recorded, I think, in the early 70s, let's see, or late 60s. Well, anyway, and it's produced by Norman Grant. So he really uh, stayed on and, and worked with the label uh, for many, many years even though he didn't, wasn't the owner of it. Now, two special uh, reissues that I got over the last few years, and I don't, I have a couple of originals, which I'm not showing right now, but uh, I love that Ella Fitzgerald did the songbooks, and the songbooks are basically uh, the American Standard songs by Cole Porter. Uh, well, let's see. here's the Cole Porter song. This is a box set of... Um, several records. These were all individually issued originally. Uh, this is a, a issue that came out in uh, 2016 and it's a beautiful sounding record. And of course, uh, the, uh, the Gershwins, George and Ira Gershwin. Uh, this is a box set and I've uh, showed it on my channel before. The original album covers looked like this. Look at these amazing paintings. Um, by Bernard Buffett, and these come in the box set version. I don't know if this is available anymore, but these watercolors are just gorgeous. Ah, this is one of the originals. This is an original I have. The boxes within, I mean, the records within that big box set are just in sleeves. But this is an original. I'd love to get all these original covers. But again, an amazing uh, artwork for Verve. Amazing records. Ella Fitzgerald sings George and Ira Gershwin, amongst my favorite uh, records. Don't be scared off by jazz vocals, especially someone like Ella Fitzgerald, who crosses over in the pop realm, too. But amazing records. Upside down. Either way. Uh, one of the most important artists, too, and I'm only pulling one right here because I love this record cover, is another uh, interpreter of the Cole Porter songbook, and that's the great piano player, Oscar Peterson. Um, I will show a little stack uh, towards the end of CDs, not complete, but some box sets I have on Verb, uh, but a gorgeous record. There's a lot of um, Oscar Peterson solo, there's with uh, combo, and there's with orchestra. And these are really a beautiful record. This is a, a, a Japanese reissue from the 80s, I believe. Okay, now, um, my favorite, maybe my m number one favorite jazz artist is the great Charlie Parker. And uh, he recorded on Clef and Savoy and... He was a part of Irv, too. Uh, this is um, Bird and Diz, Charlie Parker, number four. This is a series. This is a reissue series in the 70s. Unfortunately, these were um, electronically to simulate stereo, so they're full downs. Uh, oh, actually, they're fold ups. They're, anyway, they're, they're, stero they're fake stereo. So I wish I had mono version of these, but this is what um, I used to sell in the record business in the 70s and what were primarily available. So I picked a bunch of these up at the time. Night and Day, Charlie Parker and his orchestra. Don't shy away from the orchestra. The big orchestral things are really wonderful too, um, depending on your mood. A lot of people just want the really kind of tight combo stuff. Everyone's all over the blue notes, as I said, and the uh, impulse stuff. But this stuff's gorgeous. Uh, 
in the background, if, if you can hear this, actually I'm playing uh, so all these all these stuff um, from this Verve box set by Louis Armstrong. It's the ultimate collection of on Verve. And volume four, this is a nice one too. This is Bird on Verve. This is a, a French issue, I believe. Yeah, this is a French issue, and this is a, a, a 70s or late 60s, early 70s issue. But again, gorgeous covers. Again, whole different thing than the, than the Reed Miles and Blue Note. Amongst one of my favorite Bill Evans is this uh, show. This is from, I believe, 1968. Yeah, recorded in 1968 uh, at Montreux with Eddie Gomez and Jack DeJanet on drums. Uh, this, I believe, has just been reissued, uh, Analog Productions, an a, 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 um, audiophile issue of it uh, on 45 RPM. This is not that, but this is a, this is a 33 uh, Analog Productions issue, and it is, it is stupendous. It's really a gorgeous record. Beautiful cover, but Montreux, Switzerland, every year is the, um, the great Montreux Jazz Festival. So I uh, highly recommend this one, too, on Verve Records. Now, I was mentioning before, Creed Taylor um, really kind of made Verve go in another popular direction, a more popular direction of jazz. Not to take away from uh, the, its origins, but it, oh, just a different thing, you know? He had a different vision of what Verve should be about. And of course, amongst the, the biggest and uh, most popular albums of the day were, uh, was this album, Guess and Gilberto with Antonio Carlos Jobim. The whole bossa nova thing was sweeping the nation, as well as the Calypso thing with Harry Belafonte, which is a, you know, a, not the same thing, but uh, the international uh, sound of music, of Latin music, was really um, getting popular in the, in the early 60s uh, in America. And uh, Verve really jumped on that. And there was Stan Getz uh, teamed up with uh, Astrid, Jal Gilberto, uh, Jobim, and made, uh, you know, The Girl from Ipaneva was a huge, huge crossover hit. And you all know these records. Now, um, you all have heard of the Tone Poets and those really great uh, archival uh, audiophile records that have been coming out the last couple of years. Well, Analog Productions is putting this record out, I believe in September or October, Analog Productions. So it'd be about a $35 record, I believe from the original master tape. So, that will be one to get, you know. You find these records and everybody wants the original records and the original, but they're usually so well played and chewed up. So even though this is this is a 70s copy that I got, um, again, in the 70s, it is, which is pretty nice. I'm gonna pick up that audio uh, analog production version, which is imminent, so you might wanna pre-order it. 35 bucks for an audio file record. Uh, I think it's, it's pretty damn good. And I think the packages are going to be uh, really nice covers as well. Important record. And there's a whole series, in fact, which I'll briefly show you when I show the CDs as well. Um, Jazz Samba Encore. Look at this artwork. Look at this painting, modern artwork. And this is Luis Bonfa. Um, again, that whole Brazilian feel. Uh, Luis Bonfa, a great guitar player, um, Brazilian guitar player. So this is another great record on Verve. Important part of the Verve legacy. Another uh, artist that was really important in Verve and became very popular in the 60s. And then, uh, it, ironically, when he left um, Verve, he went to CTI, which was um, Creed Taylor's label. So I assume Creed, who had worked on him at um, Verve, brought him over. I don't know all the details on that. Well, going out of my head, Wes Montgomery, he's someone I could have included in my uh, favorite guitar players because he is one of my favorite guitar players. Had a really interesting, like double, uh, almost like uh, double note pickups or strumming, not even strumming, where he like handpicked um, uh, octaves and things and had a really great sound. Going out of my head, obviously, this is a arranging conducted by the great Oliver Nelson. Another artist, uh, a band leader, arranger, uh, orchestra leader who was on a Verve, made a lot of records of uh, his own, but worked on uh, this record and many other records. Uh, going out of my head, going out of my head over you, a <laughs> great pop record of the time. And you know all the jazz artists in the 60s, like in the late 50s as well, 
would do jazz versions of popular songs, whether they be the Beatles or the Letterman or any of these other uh, bands. So uh, this is a nice album. Now, this is a gorgeous record and it just seems so, um, I mean, look at that beautiful cover. It makes me homesick. West Montgomery, California dreaming. All the leaves are brown and the sky is gray. I got on my knees and I began to pray. San Francisco, this is from the Marin Headlands, from Marin County, looking over to the city by the bay. Um, I was born right over there. Uh, but this is really nice, uh, great. It has California Dreamin', it has uh, Sunny, the great song uh, by Bobby Hebb that was a hit in 1966, I believe. Uh, this is uh, arranged and conducted by Don Sebesky. So. Some of these records got to be very commercial, and John, Don Sebesky was another uh, arranger that went over to CTI and did a lot of that stuff. Some people feel the CTI stuff is too slick. I think you can pick and choose. There's amazing stuff. And again, they had those ama amazing glossy covers. Uh, so Creed Taylor took it in, in a more of a personal direction. Obviously, when your name's on the, uh, the label, you know, CTI, Creed Taylor, Inc. But... Uh, West Montgomery, I'll pick up anything by West Montgomery. Schmaltzy as some of them are, but just earlier stuff's really gorgeous. But this is a beautiful one. He also did a great, uh, on CTI, uh, with A Day in the Life, literally a month after, I think, the Beatles put it out, Sergeant Pepper, within a month or two. Now, of course, another um, cash cow for Ver Records, uh, was the great Jimmy Smith, a B3 organ player. You know, you either like the organ or you don't like it. I'm a huge fan, you know, it sounds like a great cocktail lounge music. But here's just a few that I have. I have a ton on compact discs and collections. Uh, the Unpredictable Jimmy Smith, again, arranged by Oliver Nelson. Featuring a, oh. Featuring his jazz version of Walk on the Wild Side. Jimmy Smith got my mojo working. You know, a lot of soul jazz stuff that he worked on. So aside from the loungy stuff, he has really a smoking uh, jazz vibe. So I suggest anyone who wants to get into jazz and is not, is afraid of it, uh, dip your toes into uh, Jimmy Smith. Great CD of uh, sort of the fusions, not, not fusion, but sort of the soul jazz mojo of things that were, um, sample later by a lot of uh, other hip-hop and uh, DJs, but the Jimmy Smith stuff is uh, pretty great. Satisfactions on here, High Heel Sneakers, C-Jam Blues, uh, again, uh, arranged and conducted by Oliver Nelson, recorded at uh, Van Gelder Studios, so I assume uh, Rudy was the engineer on this, yep, Rudy Van Gelder engineer, so, and produced by Creed Taylor, so, you know, those of you who follow the Blue Note thing, and if that's all you're into, Rudy Van Gelder worked on a lot of, a lot of labels, so he did um, farm himself out quite a bit. And this is a great one. This is a reissue, it's not original. You can find original great. Every time I tried to, they were um, basically messed up. Um, but this is The Cat. The Incredible Jimmy Smith. This is now arranged by Lalo Schifrin. Now, another arranger, Hollywood arranger. Lalo Schifrin is probably most famous for writing uh, the theme to Mission Impossible. So, uh, The Cat, Jimmy Smith. He has theme from The Carpetbaggers, Basin Street Blues, theme from The Joy House. So, this is a very bluesy, uh, soundtracky, soulful record. Uh, highly recommended as well. Now, again, there's so many other. Uh, older records that I have that I'm not going to show. I'm just going to show a few of these in the 70s, 1976 to 1980, 81. Um, once Polygram, I believe, I think it was Polygram. Uh, yeah, Polydor had the Verve catalog. He did a series of these two first. I'm going to put a link below because I did an entire video on this. I collect these whenever I can. I think I have them all, but I have not found a definitive list, even through Discogs. I can't find a definitive list of every single one. They're double albums. 
They're, you know, comped. Most of them are uh, mastered by the great mastering engineer, Robert Ludwig. They all have these illustrative covers, and you can usually find them in the used bins fairly inexpensively, um, you know, anywhere from 10 to $20. And that's for, those are double albums. And usually I found out they're, I find they're either promo copies or they hardly have ever been played for some reason. People bought them and either took care of them. They weren't trash like a lot of rock and roll records. So um, I'm just gonna go through a couple here representative of all of them. Again, look at the link below to see all of them, but I highly suggest these. The Great Billy Holiday. Look at this. Um, now again, these are older records. These, uh, these were recorded, uh, I believe, in the uh, 50s, this particular one. Again, this one was reissued, or issued in 76. Great liner notes, Billy Holiday. Another Billy Holiday. I think they're either three or four Billy Holiday records. But again, really interesting, uh, interesting covers, cover art, and uh, spectacular liner notes. West Montgomery again. Here's some of the earlier stuff of West Montgomery before it was really poppy, more bluesy in a way, except Misty is probably the most famous song. This is recorded in 1965, I think, in 64, give or take. But again, these are wonderful records. My favorite, Charlie Parker. Again, there's, a, there's like three or four Charlie Parker of this series. Holly recommended a great series to get because what's great about it, they're not, none of them are rechanneled, uh, they're analog, and um, they sound really good based on the source work. Some of the, it's older jazz in a way. It's not gonna sound like a Blue Note record or a big audio fire record, but it just, it's great music, so uh, don't be turned away. Another one, Charlie Parker. Uh, this is the Verve years from 1952 to 54. So, you know, early solid record. One of the great uh, bebop artists, Charlie Parker, one of the innovators of bebop. Lester Young, amongst my favorite um, sax players, uh, Jeepers Creepers, I Found a New Baby. Uh, there's stuff here with uh, Nat Cole on piano uh, before the trio Nat Cole would play a lot of these type of records. These are really good as well. Uh, pork Pie Hat, not in this one, but um, do I have it on this one? No, not there, but anyway, amongst my favorite jazz artists too. I mean, these are amongst my Amongst, I'm gonna say that a lot, Lester Young and Ben Webster. Ben Webster has this great throaty reed sound of, of the sax, and um, I just love his sound. So these are the uh, vinyl issues I have. I'll save the uh, CDs to last, but before uh, I go, Verve was not just a, a jazz label, but as I said, once uh, Norman Grants was uh, kind of out of the picture, somewhat, and um, Creed Taylor took over and made it more popular. They started a wing called, originally called um, Verve Forecast. Actually, it was, it was um, Verve Folkways to begin with, but then changed to a Verve Forecast. And um, they had the Blues Project and Tim Harden and Dave Van Ronk. Um, Probably one of their biggest records in the uh, mid-60s, 65, 66, is Janissean, Society's Child, uh, on Verve. An important record for so many reasons. Uh, great record, great writer, great kind of, it's folk, but it's got a little more than that, a little folk pop. But uh, this is a lovely, lovely record. And again, based on the subject matter and the artist and where she was coming from, it's an essential record, Verve Forecast. Another one um, important of the folk artists of the, uh, was uh, Richie Havens. Uh, I think most of us of my generation g really got into Richie Havens because of his performance at close to the beginning of Woodstock. Freedom, freedom, freedom. An amazing artist. Uh, this is a, a reissue, it's not original, mixed bag. Uh, highly recommended if you like a folk a little bit. Sometimes it gets into the uh, uh, Indian stuff, raga-ish a little bit. But High Flying Bird was very famous for him. San Francisco Bay Blues is a version of uh, Just Like a Woman and Eleanor Rigby on here. Highly recommended. 
I love Richie Havens and I hardly ever see him on these videos, but um, again, Verve Records. Now, Verve did dip into rock and roll, and it's, when you think about it, looking back on it, it's, it's really interesting and innovative, and I don't know if it was Creed Taylor or who was the, oh, this would have been after Creed, Creed Taylor left in 67. So about 67, and I didn't research this, who was the A&R main guy at Verve, if there was one, and who was making these decisions? Because he made a decision, two, these two in particular, I'm only gonna show two artists, but uh, show several records by them. Think about this. These records were not big sellers, but they're amongst the most uh, innovative, original, and influential uh, groups ever in uh, rock and roll. And of course, the very first one is the Velvet Underground with a cover. This is a 70s copy, um, covered by Andy Warhol, 70s copy I got in about 73, I think. And uh, I never peeled it off, and it's in pristine shape. I don't really have to say much about the Velvet Underground and Nico, but uh, an important, important album and on Verve Records. So that's an interesting story. I need to research that, and someone I'm sure will put that in the comments more about that, but important. And then just because, I'll show another one of their albums. Uh, this is um, Velvet Underground with um, After Hours, Beginning to See the Light, Jesus, Candy Says. I mean, I, I have all their records, so I could have shown them but all, but I didn't want to belabor the point. You get the idea. But the other artist, <laughs> I could just see, I'm really, would love to see the pitch meeting, but I, I love when artists really jump into um, something really unique. And I would say this artist, The Mothers of Invention, absolutely free, Verve Records, Frank Zappa, Would you take him home to meet your mother? <laughs> I love it. Um, I bought these records when I was a kid, and just be, I think I bought, I think Freak Out was my first record I bought of the mothers because it was somewhat cheap and it was a double record set. Um, oh my God, <laughs> I brought this home. Oh my God, I listened to it for a week straight, like three times a day. It was just, I couldn't believe what I was listening to. You know? Um, and of course, when I bought this record, <laughs> I think I hid it from my parents, especially my mother. I don't think she, like, what the fuck are you showing Maslov? Norman? Mother? <laughs> Norman? But of course, there's the Beatle connection. Mother's of Invention on Verve. The rest is history, right? Okay, I'm going to close out now with um, some compact discs. I'll go through them pretty quickly. As I said, the Ultimate Collection, Louis Armstrong. This is what's playing now. Uh, this is, uh, I think it's the complete Louis and Ella. Uh, Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Armstrong. They did a number of collaborative records on Verve. Really great. Uh, collection. This is the Stan Getz, the complete Bossa Nova years. Just to give you an idea, there's a big band Bossa Nova, Stan Getz and Laredo Almeida, great, great guitar player, who played with Modern Jazz Quartet amongst others and a lot of his own records. Getz and Gilberto, this is the famous one. This is kind of a cool box if you're in the compact disc mode. With Charlie Bird, Again, this great modern art and the one I showed before with Luis Bonfa. So, uh, an important uh, collection of records. And again, the analog productions version of Getz and Gilberto is coming up, by, I think, in September, but you can look it up. But, it's so, you know, there's so many reissues that stuff, and some of them are not that great sounding. So, I would suggest getting the analog productions version. Again, the songbooks. This is the complete Ella Fitzgerald songbooks. I won't pull them all out individually, but it's got Cole Porter, 
Jerome Kern, Johnny Mercer, Harold Arlen, Rogers and Hart, Irving Berlin, and the Gershwins, and the Duke Ellington songbook. It has a wonderful hardback book within it. A gorgeous, gorgeous set of Ella Fitzgerald again, amongst my favorite, my favorite jazz vocalist, my favorite blues vocalist, blues jazzy. And this is a complete Verve uh, series, a complete Ho Billie Holiday on Verve, 1945 to 1959. Now, these recordings, they started, he did make like on Clef and other uh, label, or these other areas, early 78 recordings. And then um, obviously in the 50s, they went to LP. So um, this is an amazing set. I think there's a different version of this now because this is the original version uh, with the um, folio and, the, and this gorgeous book. Oh, Billie Holiday, some of the most beautiful music ever recorded by a vocalist. Bud Powell, great uh, piano player. This is a beautiful folio as well. Again, in the 90s, early 2000s, the CD era was really rich with these beautiful box sets and folios. And I mean, look at that. A lot of liner notes by Norma Grants and Creed Taylor. And then, and then, pork pie, goodbye pork pie hat, Lester Young. Gorgeous sounding player, the complete Lester Young studio sessions on verse. A lot of times the studio sessions will have every take of an artist, of a take, which not everyone's into. Anybody who wears hats like this guy is on my side always. Great Lester Young. Was it Monk who wrote Goodbye Pork Pie Hat? You know, when he died, when uh, Lester Young died? Anyway, and then ending up two great uh, things. This is the Verve story. This is a nice overview of, of the Verve record from 44 to 94. This really goes into even the later period, which I'm not talking about. It has Clef Records on here and Verve. That's why you see, even though I mentioned he started Verve in uh, 57, it sort of incorporated also Clef Records. And so that's why there's other recordings that they put out later on from 78, say. Some later came out on 33 when the LP came out. But um, this is a cool thing. I would die to have an original of this. The jazz scene was a special edition that um, Norman Grants put together. I don't have the exact date. They made 5,000 copies of this originally as, um, I guess they were 78s probably. Um, and it was, they were all signed by Norman Grants. This is num sign number one. Of course, this is a repro, so, so I don't have a number one signed. And of course, this is a compact disc that wasn't limited like that. But it really goes through the whole history at the time of Verve Records. So it only goes through those early years of Verve Records. But important years, maybe they were. So. Verve Records, um, an important part of musical history. Amazing book, amazing music. Uh, happy birthday, Norman Grands. And um, check out this stuff, it's wonderful. Leave any comments, uh, if you have a favorite Verve artist, please subscribe. You don't have to click that bell because I don't want to wake you up at three in the morning. <laughs> But subscribe, and then you'll see me, and unless you want to get that notification that I made a new video, which will probably uh, wake you up three times a, a day. Take care. Mazzy loves you.